Hi, I'm Ben, and I'm a solutions architect here at AWS. Our customers often ask us on how to validate their AWS Shield Advanced deployment and how to avoid common configuration mistakes. In this video, I'll show you how to do this. Let's get started. First, let's quickly go over the recommended best practices to help avoid common deployment mistakes. You want to subscribe all your accounts in the AWS organization to Shield Advance and also make sure Shield protection is activated on all the necessary resources. For Shield-enabled resources, you also want to make sure you're leveraging AWS WAF along with features such as rate-based rules and logging. Lastly, you'll want to look into using features such as Shield Proactive Engagement and also ensure you have a robust incident response strategy. Now let's navigate over to the AWS console. If you only have one AWS account, you will only need to subscribe to Shield Events on that account. However, if you have multiple accounts in your organization, you will want to make sure that you are also subscribing to Shield Events on those accounts as well. Shield Events is activated on a per account basis and the subscription fee is a flat fee of $3,000 a month as long as they are all under the same organization. Let's go ahead and navigate over to the Shield console. Here in the Overview tab, you can see that I have already subscribed to Shield Advance on this account. However, it is not enough to just be subscribed to Shield Advance, and you'll want to make sure that you have activated Shield Protection and all the necessary resources by clicking Add Resources to Protect. In our example here, we'll enable Shield Advance for our CloudFront distribution. Now go ahead and select the resources you want to protect and click Protect with Shield Advance. I highly recommend adding a WAF web backlog to all supported Shield Advance protected resources. This will allow Shield Advance to baseline Layer 7 traffic and alert for potential Layer 7 DDoS attacks, even without requiring WAF rules. Here I'll create a web backlog for my CloudFront distribution and name it Sample WAF. Another benefit of Shield Advance is that WAF charges are mitigated when Shield Protection is activated on those resources. Additionally, I recommend that you add a blanket rate-based rule that has 2-3 times your peak traffic to help protect against HTTP floods that can negatively impact the resources. For example, let's say we see about 100 requests during peak hours for my sample application. Let's create a rate-based rule here that blocks requests once it hits 200 requests every 5 minutes. Now we can finish creating the WebAcle and the CloudFront distribution should be protected. Moving forward, you can configure Rapid3 health checks on your resources to help improve the detection of DDoS events. I have a pre-created health check in Route 53, so I'll go ahead and select that. In the final step here, you can set up notifications and alarms for Shield Advanced metrics or for your rate-based rules. I highly recommend to create these based on DDoS CloudWatch metrics such as DDoS Detected. You should also consider setting up a OneView CloudWatch dashboard with this metric to be able to see the state of all protected resources. I'll skip these for now, but feel free to set this up as needed. Go ahead and click Finish Configuration when you are satisfied with the setup. Another optional way to manage all of this is through AWS Firewall Manager. AWS Firewall Manager allows you to manage AWS WAF, Shield Advanced, VPC security groups, and other various features from a central place. Firewall Manager can be used to manage policies across multiple accounts. Next, I recommend going to the WAF console to check different regions for resources using WAF, such as Global, for CloudFront and individual regions for other resources. A few things to keep in mind is that there will be cost for data transfer out for using Shield Advance. 
Also, there are some features of WAP that are not included with Shield Advance, including the aid of a spot control managed rule group. A useful feature of Shield Advance is to enable proactive engagement. This will allow the Shield Response Team, also known as SRT, to reach out to you when there is a detected DDoS event. However, you will need either business or enterprise support to activate this, and you also have to associate Route 53 health checks to the protected resources. The SRT can only contact customers under attack for the resources that have the health checks associated with them, and after this feature is enabled. We highly recommend enabling and configuring WAF logging to centralize log ingestion for monitoring and analysis. In order for the AWS Shield response team to view the logs, AES encryption is fine, but you cannot encrypt the logs using AWS Key Management Service. In addition, you will also want to grant SRT access to relevant S3 buckets in case of an attack. Do you note that DDoS events are handled as part of the shared responsibility model at AWS, so mitigating DDoS is not a hands-off approach. We highly recommend you have someone on the team be available to work on this. Lastly, we highly recommend that you have a robust incident response strategy that serves as a blueprint for responding to security incidents. Understanding that security as a process is critical where frequent fire drills and penetration tests can help improve your overall security posture. For DDoS testing, go over DDoS AWS policies in our documentation here. DDoS is generally not permitted and should be conducted by an approved AWS partner, which is different from penetration testing. For exceptions and questions, contact aws-ddos-testing at amazon.com. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.